Good day, everyone. I'm Rosil Algis, introducing you the Bael Voyagers of the Past group. We have here Miss Angeline Marzon of Block One, Chenilu Torion of Block One, Abigail Joyce Torion of Block One, Michelle Marga Cahis of Block One, Jeshel Manau of Block Two, and of course, me myself, Rosil Algis from Block One. We are assigned to do this reporting by our instructor Julius Padua as an activity for our semi-final. Our topic is one of the social, political, economic, and cultural issues in the Philippine history, the Agrarian Reform. There is a saying that states, when land rights are secure, the cycle of poverty is broken. Indeed. Especially that agriculture is one of our main sources for living. But before anything else, let us have a little silence as we speak our prayer. Prayer. Almighty God, we praise and glorify your name. Thank you for all the blessings we receive from time to time. Thank you for surrounding us with non-toxic environment. We are sorry for all of our trespasses. May you accept us with our imperfections. God, we pray, our report will be successful. We hope that our discussion will give others learnings relevant to our assigned topic. Amen. Hello again. I'm back to give you an overview of our topic. So we will discuss to you the following. Agrarian reform, its basic element, the land reform, and its three aspects economic aspect, social-cultural aspect, and religious aspect. Next is the Comprehensive Agrarian Reform Program or CARP and its coverage. Then the history of agrarian reform. The agrarian reform laws and acts in the Philippines which are Land Reform Act of 1955, Revised Agricultural Land Reform Code, Comprehensive Agrarian Reform Law and Comprehensive Agrarian Reform Program Extension with Reforms or CARPER Law. All of these are relevant to agrarian reform. Please sit back and lend your ears and minds as we sail to you learnings about agrarian reform. Agrarian reform is simply the distribution of lands. It is a program founded on the rights of farmers and regular farm workers who are landless to own directly or collectively the lands they till or in the case of other farm workers to receive a just and fair share of the fruits thereof. The basic element of agrarian reform include land reform. Land reform is a unified set of measures designed to eliminate obstacles to economic and social development arising out of defects in the agrarian structure. Example is the Comprehensive Agrarian Land Reform Program that was created to end unfair land ownership practices. There are three aspects of agrarian reform. First is the economic aspect. Agriculture is considered as the most important component of economic structure. Agrarian reform was strengthened in order to create an economic environment that will encourage farmers to produce more and market more of what they produce. Next, the social-cultural aspect. The implementation of agrarian reform resulted to favorable social-cultural changes. A change from self-subsistent mindset to one of surplus for selling, improvement of social order in the farmlands, active practice of leadership roles, increased net family income and widened contacts with the outside world, and promoted modern outlook among farmers. Lastly, the religious aspect. Biblically, God is the creator of everything. However, church became an enemy of land reform. The immersed chains of poverty due to being landless pushed people to revolt and some of these revolts directly pointed to the lands owned by the church. The Objectives of Agrarian Reform 
The Groya Reform Program aims to end conflicts pertaining to land ownership and bring harmony between rural and urban people, bring stability in political setup of the country, bring equality in opportunities, income, and wealth, and facilitate agrarian reform activities. The Comprehensive Agrarian Reform Program, more commonly known as CARP, is an agrarian reform law of the Philippines whose legal basis is the Republic Act No. 6657, otherwise known as the Comprehensive Agrarian Reform Law or CARL. The land tenure improvement is highly recognized as the most integral aspect of the program. The program beneficiaries development is a support service delivery component of CARP. The adjudication of cases involves the adjudication of cases by the Department of Agrarian Reform Adjudication Board or DARAB. The adjudication of cases deals with disputes pertaining to tenancy relations, valuation of plants acquired by DAR under compulsory acquisition mode, rights and obligations of persons, whether natural or juridical. Engage in the management, cultivation, and use of all agricultural lands, ejectment, and disposition of tenants, placeholders. The Agrarian Legal Assistance is under the Bureau of Legal Assistance or BALA. The BALA provides legal assistance to the beneficiaries affected by agrarian cases, particularly those whose legal rights as ARBs are challenged by landowners. History of Agrarian Reform During the pre-colonial period, the Philippines, even before being colonized by different countries, already have developed an organization for their communities. The land owned by these communities is known as barangay, which consists of 30 to 100 families which administered by different chiefs. In these barangays, everyone, regardless of status, had access in the land and mutually shares resources to the rest of the community. They believed in and practiced the concept of stewardship, where relationship between man and nature is very important. Land cultivation was done by Cainian system, or the slush and burn method, wherein land was cleared by burning the bushes before planting the crops, or either land was plowed and harrowed before planting. On the other hand, food production was intended for family consumption at first, but later, neighboring communities were engaged in a barter trade exchanging their goods with others. Some even traded their agricultural products with luxury items of some foreign traders like the Chinese, Arabs, and Europeans. The only recorded transaction of land sale during that time was the Maragdas Code. This is the selling of the Panay Island to the ten Bornean Datus in exchange for a golden salakot and a long gold necklace. Although the Code of Loaran was was one of the oldest written laws of the Muslim society which contains provision on the list of cultivated lands, there was no record how the lease arrangement was practiced. When the Spanish came to the country in 1521, this is the Sp Spanish period already, they introduced Pueblo, an agricultural system wherein the native rural communities were organized into Pueblo, and each Christianized native family is given four to five hectares of land to cultivate. Thus, there is no landless class. Nonetheless, these native families are merely landholders and not legitimate land owners. By law, the land assigned to them was the property of the Spanish king, where they paid their colonial tributes to the Spanish authorities in the form of agricultural products that they produce. Americans, during their time, they realized that being landless was the main cause of social unrest and revolt at that time. So they sought to put an end to the miserable conditions of the tenant tillers and small farmers by passing several land palaces to widen the base of small land holdings and distribute land ownership among the greater number of Filipino tenants and farmers. 
The Huk Balahap or Hukbong Bayan Laban sa mga Hapon was organized on March 29, 1942, happened during the Japanese occupation. Huk Balahap is an anti-Japanese group which took over vast tracts of land and gave the land to the people. Some of the agrarian reform laws were passed during the administration of Manuel Kazan. So, starting on Republic Act 4054, or the Rice Tendency Law, was the first law on crop sharing, which legalized the 50 to 50 share between landlord and tenant, with corresponding support to tenants protecting them against abuses of landlords. However, this law was hardly implemented because most of the municipal councils were composed of powerful hacienderos and big landlords. In fact, only one municipality passed a resolution for its enforcement and majorities have petitioned its application to the Governor General. Republic Act No. 34 was passed on during the administration of Manuel Rojas and it enacted to establish a 70-30% to 30 sharing arrangement between I mean it enacted to establish a 70 to 30 sharing arrangement between tenant and landlord. The 70% of the harvest will go to the person who shouldered the expenses for planting, harvesting, and for the work animals. With this, it reduced the interest of landowners' loans to tenants at more than 6%. In Elpidio Quirino's administration, the Executive Order No. 355, or the Land Settlement Development Corporation, La Disico, was established to accelerate and expand the peasant resettlement program of the government. However, due to limited post-war resources, the program was not successful. In times of President Ramon Magsaysay, As the father of agrarian reform, he was known due to his programs implemented for a change in regards of agrarian reform. Firstly, he mandated the Agriculture Tenancy Act of 1954, where tenants can rent the land of landowners, and another one is the Land Reform Act of 1955, where it is the distribution of rice and corn lands over 200 hectares for farmers and 604 corporations. Next stop. The administration under President Justado Macapagal, he implemented the Agricultural Land Reform Code. It is the distribution of private lands to farmers an easy term of payment. Now let's proceed to President Marcos. Under his administration, Republic Act 6390 implemented Agrarian Reform Special Fund Act, where in this law financed the agri agrarian reform programs second tenant emancipation act it talks about the operational land transfer and the third is the pd number 27 where the farmer should only have seven hectares but if it goes beyond seven hectares it should be sold to another farmer who does not have land president ramos administration when president fidel v ramos formally took over in 1992 His administration came face to face publics who have lost confidence in the agrarian reform program. His administration committed to the vision, fairer, faster, and more meaningful implementation of the agrarian reform program. GMA administration, the agrarian reform program under the Arroyo administration is anchored on the vision to make the countryside economically viable for the Filipino family by building partnership and promoting social equity and new economic opportunities towards lasting peace and sustainable rural development. Next to GMA administration is the President Noynoy Aquino administration. Under the governance of President Aquino, The DAR, which is the lead agency for crop implementation, is best in sustaining the gains of agrarian reform through its three major components. These are the LTI, PBD, and AJD. Together with the efforts to fight graft and corruption by the president, it is imperative to have institutional reforms with, within DAR as a complement to the above-mentioned DAR components, as well as to give credence, transparency, and accountability at all sectors of the DAR bureaucracy. 
Agrarian Reform Laws and Acts in the Philippines. I will be discussing the first two Land Reform Act here in the Philippines. The first one is the Land Reform Act of 1955 RA-1400, also known as Land to the Landless Program. It is an act defining a land tenure policy providing for an instrumentality to carry out the policy and appropriating funds for its implementation. This Republic Act No. 1400 created the Land Tenure Administration, was responsible for the acquisition and distribution of large tenanted rice and corn lands over 200 hectares for individuals and 600 hectares for corporations. The second one is the Revised Agricultural Land Reform Code RA-6389. It is an act amending Republic Act 3844 as amended otherwise known as the Agricultural Code and for other purposes. It is an act to ordain the Agricultural Land Reform Code and to institute land reforms in the Philippines, including the abolition of tenancy and the channeling of capital into industry. The main features of the new amendments are the following. First, abolition of personal cultivation and conversion to residential subdivision as grounds for the ejectments of tenants. Second, automatic conversion of all share tenants in the Philippines to leasehold tenants with some exceptions and qualifications. Third, creation of the Department of Agrarian Reform. Fourth, increased financing for the land reform program. And lastly, crediting of rentals in favor of the tenant against the just compensation that he would have to pay in case the land was expropriated by the government for resale to the tenant. Land covered by the code, tenanted areas, landed estates, old settlements, and proposed settlements. Comprehensive Agrarian Reform Law, RA 6657, or known as CARL, is an act instituting a comprehensive agrarian reform program to promote social justice and industrialization providing the mechanism for its implementation and other purposes. The lands covered by comprehensive agrarian reform law are all those public and private agricultural lands, regardless of tenorial arrangement and commodity produced. Meanwhile, the lands outside Carl are all those lands which have been classified or proclaimed and or actually directly and exclusively used and found to be necessary for parks, wildlife, forest reserves, fish sanctuaries, and breeding grounds, watershed, and mangroves are exempted. The lands covered by Comprehensive Agrarian Reform Law shall be distributed as much as possible to landless residents of the same barangay or in the absence thereof, landless residents of the same municipality. So here are the qualified beneficiaries of Carl. First, agricultural leases and shared tenants, regular farm workers, seasonal farm workers and other farm workers, actual tillers or occupants of public lands, collective or cooperatives of above beneficiaries, and others who are directly working on the land. Comprehensive Agrarian Reform Program Extension with Reforms, or CARPER Law, is an act strengthening the Comprehensive Agrarian Reform Program. This act was signed into law on August 7, 2009 with the key features of providing landowners equality in terms of income and opportunities, empower landowners beneficiaries to have equitable land ownership, enhance agricultural production and productivity. This also provides employment to more agricultural workers and put an end to conflicts regarding land ownership.